Hello and welcome to today's Learning Morning. I am Nobita Rajagopalan, Co-Founder and Director of the Andrew Gobi Consulting House. So today's Learning module is on active listening. Listening is the most important element of great communication. Wherever there is effective listening, we find that the numbers of conflicts decrease and the relationships improve. It enhances productivity, there are lesser misunderstandings, we become a great communicator. And of course, research has shown Great leaders have one thing in common. They are very good listeners. So, what is the objective of listening? There is only one objective, that is to understand. Responding and providing solutions are only and only byproducts of active listening. So, I would like to repeat that there is only one objective of listening, that is to understand. In Stephen Covey's book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective. His fifth habit talks about seek first to understand and then to listen. So, friends, the most important objective of listening, do always remember that, is only to understand. So, what is active listening? Active listening is the process by which an individual secures information from another individual or group. What does it involve? It involves paying attention to the conversation, not interrupting. Taking time to understand what the speaker is speaking and of course asking relevant questions to really and completely understand what the speaker is speaking. Okay, so now I am going to take you through the five stages of this. Now the first stage is all about receiving information. Stage two is about understanding the information. Stage three is about remembering the information. And stage four is evaluating the information and stage 5 is then responding to the information. So let's go through stage 1 which is receiving. It is the intentional focus of hearing a speaker's message, filtering out other sources so that we can isolate the message and avoid the confusing mixture of external stimuli. At this stage, remember, we are still only hearing the message. Again, we do not interrupt the speaker at this stage. We need to leave everything that we are doing and put all, all our attention into listening to the speaker. So, our phones, our laptops, anything else that we may be working needs to be left right now. Stage 2. Understanding. Now, here we attempt to understand the meaning of the message, which may not always be easy. But before we try to understand, let's be sure that we are not carrying any baggage with us. Now what does that baggage mean? It could be dislike for the person, our preconceived ideas about the subject, some things that we already know, any other bias that we may have about the person or the subject. Remember, this is not about you. In case there is anything that is not clear to you, you will ask questions of clarification. This is where we start asking questions. Now the questions will be closed-ended or open-ended. So now we need to know what closed-ended and open-ended questions are. So let's start with closed-ended questions. Now a closed-ended question has fixed answers, either a yes or a no answer. So it could be um, what is the time? Right? And you're going to give me one fixed answer. Are you feeling hot? You would either say a yes or a no. Are you hungry? So typically those questions which have a yes no answer are closed ended questions. I can even choose from a set of responses that too would be closed ended. Right? Um, so it would be a multiple uh, choice questions. Uh, they are very specific and elicit two point answers. They do not give any scope for elaborating on any answer. And hence, are called closed-ended questions. Now, what are open-ended questions? Now, open-ended questions are questions that cannot be answered with a simple yes or no. They require the respondents to elaborate on their points. They help us to see the other person's perspective. And it gives a chance to others for elaborate answers. It helps us to so, an example of an open-ended question would be 
So what do you think about this? What are your thoughts about this? What are your feelings about this? Right? So these are the questions which give a lot of scope for others to answer. So now let me give you some more examples of closed-ended and open-ended questions. So let's look at this question. Would you recommend our product or service? The answer would be a simple yes or no. But now, if we were to modify this and ask an open-ended question, which would be that what were the main reasons you chose our product or service? Just look at how much more you can get from this data. Another example would be, uh, would you consider joining the team meeting every week? Again, that's be a yes or a no. So what would you ask? What would make you join our team meeting every week? Alright, another example would be um, that are you happy with the food? So of course you are only going to get a yes or no answer. However, if we now ask what are the things that you liked or disliked about the food, here we are going to get a lot of answers. So it's important for us to know when to ask closed-ended questions and when to ask open-ended questions. It's always a good idea to mix the closed and the open-ended questions to get as much information as you want. So you would now get to hear the perspective of the other person. Okay, now let's look at stage three, which is remembering. So remembering begins with listening. And if you can't remember something that was said, you might not have been listening effectively. Now you don't have to remember everything word for word, but to remember the overall context is really important. There are times that remembering is very critical as it is linked to your productivity. So of course it is a good idea to have a small notebook or diary in your pocket at all times so that you can note down and then remembering is easy. If understanding has been inaccurate, recollection of the message will be inaccurate. So let's look at stage 4 now. Stage 4 is evaluating. What is it all about? So evaluating or judging the value of the message we might be making. Ah, oh, this makes sense. Or this is very odd. Because everyone has biases and perspectives. The same message may mean different for different people. Hence it is essential that we should have asked the relevant questions so that we are on the same page as the speaker. Now evaluating can actually impact effective listening. If we are going to put in our own evaluation into what Let's look at stage 5. Stage 5 is all about responding. This is the final stage of listening where we have to respond, that is perform the action. Now it could involve anything. It could involve advice, support, doing a task, um, depending on the need of the speaker. This is also called the feedback stage, where you will get feedback on whether you have listened well or not. If the task that you do or the advice or support is aligned to what the speaker wants, then of course we have this. Otherwise, we have it. The speaker also gets feedback on how clear and effective the communication was because if you haven't understood me completely, it is possible that there was a gap in the speakers in this way. Okay, so I will just summarize the five stages of listening once again. Right? So the first stage is receiving. Right? It's just about here. Second is about understanding. This is where we ask the questions. We need to ensure that we understand what has been spoken. The third stage is about remembering. If we don't remember anything at all, it's unlikely that we can listen. Stage four is about evaluating. Do we have personal biases involved in it? So let's rephrase, right, so that we do not have any biases which are impacting. And stage 5, of course, is the final stage, which is responding. Okay, so now that we have gone through the five stages of this, let's just quickly 
and look at the listening process. Now, the listening process in itself is really simple, right? It's a simple action that you need to take. Let's look at the first action. The first action is be quiet and hear the speaker. Coincides with stage one. Second, ask relevant questions for better understanding. This coincides with stage two and three because we ask questions and we understand what is being spoken. And of course, as we understand, we end up remembering it as well. And then the third, the third step, or the third step of the process is about rephrasing your understanding, which is all about the fourth stage, right? Um, do not evaluate, just rephrase so that you know what the speaker has spoken and what you have understood is exactly the same. So that's all that it takes for being a great listener. One, two, three simple steps. Yes, however, there are barriers to this. So let's look at a few of them. But what are things that would, you know, prevent you from listening completely or being a great, effective and active listener? The one very important one is boredom. When we are bored with the topic, we end up being bad listeners. Internal issues, which typically would mean that what's going on inside of me? Am I stressed? Am I anxious? Am I fearful? Am I worried? Is my mind somewhere else? The third barrier to listening would be knowing it all. Now, when I know everything, do I really need to listen to you? Is that an important barrier? So it's really important for us to empty ourselves and you know, be in a space of just hearing the other person out. Another uh, barrier would be being preoccupied, right? So in case I have in my mind that, hey, I need to close that, finish that, the boss is calling, I've got a call, call the client, uh, my mind is not going to be in the present. Now the next one is environmental distractions would be any kind of noise around us or someone's doing something there and something's happening there, something is happening here. All these things are in the instructions. And when we start looking here and there, there goes our listening. Another important barrier to listening is our perception. How I perceive something how you perceive something is not entirely different. Right? So again, what do we do about perceptions? Yeah, and simple thing about asking questions and then it helps to clarify perceptions. If you remember, asking open-ended questions helps to clarify perceptions, other person's perspectives. So it's really not all the thing. Then another important value to listening would be red flag words. So for example, if somebody uses abusive words, uh, an angry tone and uh, anything which is unfriendly and not compatible also can become a better to listen. No one likes to listen to words or tone that do not suit us, especially if they are angry or abusive. And of course, language barriers, as we all know, is a very, very large barrier to listening because if I was speaking to a Hindi speaking audience in French or an English speaking audience in Bengali, it's not going to help us. And of course, one very important barrier would be attention span issues, right? And especially in today's day, where we are so digitally um, involved, uh, we are either on our laptops or our phones most of the times, so we do have attention span issues. So these, in a nutshell, could be barriers to this. And it's really very simple to overcome these barriers. It's just being aware First step is about being aware that what is the value that I am facing. Right? And second is just taking a small step of following the process. Am I keeping quiet? Am I involved asking questions? Am I rephrasing? If we keep our three process steps in mind, these barriers to listening are going to be okay. So I hope you enjoyed this learning video today and would love to see you again. Do subscribe to our channel, link is given below. Thank you once again.